in the three problems that we have solved so far uh, with FORM, uh, the limit state uh, always turned out to be a linear function. Uh, it doesn't have to be so always, obviously. So let's take a look and see uh, what we would do uh, if we encountered a nonlinear limit state. Uh, and B4 uh, gives us an opportunity. So it's the same problem uh, in terms of the element definition. It's a cable uh, under tension. Uh, the yield strength is random. The cross-sectional area is random. The load is deterministic because we want to stay confined to two random variable problems uh, yet. Uh, but the distributions of y and a are not log normal as we did in the previous example, uh, but uh, they are both normal. So now, immediately there is a problem we perceive is that uh, we, we can't take log of x uh, of y and log of a uh, and come up with a, a distribution that is normal or any other well-behaved distribution. Um, first of all, you cannot take logarithm of a normal random variable because it takes on negative values and secondly, even if we truncated it at zero, uh, it still wouldn't help us because uh, that would not give us uh, a known distribution or density function. So we have to accept that we are going to deal with a nonlinear limit state. So um, let us just do a simple Hasse-Fullin transformation uh, of uh, well, x1 and x2, x1 being y itself and x2 being a. So uh, with uh, the second moment transformation, our uh, limit state in U space uh, becomes uh, a nonlinear function. Uh, so the constants come from uh, the mean and standard deviations of um, Y and A. Uh, also, there's one important difference here is uh, we have not made any requirement that the failure probability or the reliability index uh, be of a certain value. Uh, we have uh, just presented the problem uh, given the uh, properties of Y and A and here all we want is to find what the reliability index is. We just want to find it and then um, whether we want to move uh, mean of A around to achieve a particular uh, beta that we will take up later. But for now, let us just see how we can solve this nonlinear limit state uh, problem. Uh, obviously, uh, the way we did the previous three is just have the minimum distance to a straight line from the origin. It's not going to work anymore. So we have a nonlinear constraint and a nonlinear objective function. Uh, the way to go about would be this gives us an opportunity to show the application of the gradient projection method uh, that I presented in the previous lecture. So uh, let's proceed step by step. This is our limit state equation uh, and this is a limit state function uh, and if we uh, plot it on u1, u2 space, uh, we see that uh, it's, it's a, a, a line, a curved line and we are going to find the minimum distance uh, to this blue line. Um, this is the failure region to the left of uh, the blue line and just to make sure that that is the failure region we can uh, see um, whether the origin is in the failed or the safe set. So uh, putting uh, the u1 and u2 as 0 we see that uh, the function is positive. So the origin is definitely contained in the safe set. Uh, okay, so we have uh, that behind us and now uh, we start the optimization process. Uh, we could choose any initial point. Uh, it's, uh, it's good to choose a point that would not 
take us to the origin because it might be very difficult to move away from there. Uh, so uh, let's say we choose y as 40 and a as 60 in the space of physical or basic variables and that gives us uh, a u1 and a u2 that you see on the screen and uh, that's also marked with the red arrow uh, on the first quadrant. Uh, so our choice has been such that we start from very much uh, inside uh, an interior point in the safe set uh, but let's now see how the iteration proceeds. Uh, so this is the steps that we are going to follow uh, in the gradient projection algorithm. So uh, after that uh, it's good to know that the, the very first iteration ends with uh, you back on the limit state line. Uh, the red arrow shows that and we have already uh, come very close to the optimum. Uh, U1 is at minus 1.76, U2 is at minus 1.40. Uh, we are pretty much on the limit state surface, uh, limit state line. Uh, H is very close to 0, 10 to the power minus 3 roughly. Uh, and beta, the, the distance at this stage is about 2.26. So let's proceed. Uh, we move uh, closer to the optimal point uh, from minus 1.76, u1 moves to minus 1.93. Uh, so uh, u1 moves a little further away. Uh, u2 moves from minus 1.4 uh, to minus 1.1. Uh, the point is still very much on the limit state uh, line. It's about 3, 10 to the minus 4. And beta comes down to 2.23. And then in the next iteration, uh, we have pretty much converged already. Uh, u is minus 1.96 and u2 is minus uh, 1.045. Uh, beta is almost uh, unchanged, 2.225. Uh, and h is even smaller. So we are again very much on the line and we are traveling down the line or up in this case. Uh, the next iteration, uh, u1 moves a little further away, uh, u2 moves a little closer, beta is practically unchanged and the functional value is very very close to zero and now we have converged, all tolerances have been met. So uh, the answer is beta is 2.225 uh, and uh, the u1 and u2 star values give us uh, is uh, the physical uh, variables uh, at the design point uh, as 26.8 ksi for yield and 44.8 square inch for area. Uh, so obviously in this situation where uh, the, the mean of the cross section area is 50 square inches, uh, we end up with a reliability much lower than than 3. Uh, so now, uh, obviously, if we got back to the, the mode of all the previous problems, B1, B2, and B3, and said that, no, this is not good enough, uh, beta of 2.22 is not going to work, uh, we have to have a beta of 3. So in that case, we now have a nested optimization. Uh, situation and that brings us to problem B5 uh, and uh, now the question is again we want uh, beta of 3 and so what uh, mean area would achieve that so we are letting the mean to be selected which basically means from a practical viewpoint that we can choose a thicker or a thinner uh, cable with the same material uh, so uh, we have to optimize uh, beta as a function of area or mean area but even to find beta we have to have one more optimization so that's why I said nested optimization uh, so as before we choose x1 as y and x2 as a and it gives us uh, the limit state equation uh, uh, limit state function in u space uh, as you see we have uh, the mean of A uh, not 
defined so that's that's one of the unknowns and so we have to find that mean of a so that it's a constant optimization and uh, the distance is minimized so this in the yellow block what you see is the problem statement uh, so uh, let's let's see what results we get uh, what we have here is uh, after putting in all the values of uh, the mean and standard deviation of uh, y and a uh, and mu a is the unknown here we get a family of curves so uh, all those lines that you see uh, previously we just have one corresponding to uh, the mean of a as 50 now uh, we have a family of mean of a uh, starting from 45 square inch all the way to 70 square inch and all the stars that you see uh, on these limit state uh, lines uh, all those uh, marked as closest point to the origin so each of those curves has one optimal point uh, the point of maximum likelihood the checking point uh, the, the distance would be the corresponding beta value so each of those gives rise to one beta value for the corresponding mean area uh, so if we uh, put all of them uh, together uh, if if the beta is extracted for uh, each of those curves we get a relationship between beta and the mean of a uh, in the previous problem in b4 we actually solved um, beta uh, as about 2.22 uh, when mean of a was 50 square inch but as i said here we let the mean of a vary between 45 and 70 and um, we see where it uh, gets to beta of 3 first so it so happens that um, if you see the, the graph on the right uh, the uh, beta of 3 is achieved when the mean uh, of A is roughly about 61 or 62 square inches so that uh, would be the answer for uh, the checking point values and the corresponding optimal uh, mean area that gives beta of three uh, if you're interested in the design point uh, the design point for yield is 22.4 ksi which is something we have been observing quite a lot uh, in that region and the design uh, value for area is about 54 square inches so the mean has to be something like 61 uh, and uh, the design value a little lower than the mean uh, would be 54 now I would like to leave you with a thought and we are going to come back to this uh, is when we do Monte Carlo simulations for the same problem uh, we see that the actual PF of this cable uh, is not phi of minus 3 phi of minus 3 gives very close to 0 0.001 uh, but it's actually much larger so uh, FORM is underestimating the failure probability um, instead of uh, 0 0.001 um, which is what form things the actual value is as I write here 16 percent larger uh, so why is that the question is why is form underestimating the PF and uh, we are going to tackle this uh, in the next lecture where we take up uh, more problems with FORM uh, and then spend some time discussing SORM second order reliability method uh, and following which we are going to take up uh, Monte Carlo simulations.